around. You're doing all you can to market your business, but are you sure you have the right strategy or seeing a great return on investment? You need Salem Surround. The marketing team here at Salem Surround is ready to help your business now. We'll design a plan that targets potential customers with proven marketing strategies, using everything in our toolkit to work for you. Digital, audio, mobile, even audience engaging contests and promotions. Contact Salem Surround for a free evaluation of your marketing plan and see how we can help place your advertising message in front of today's consumers. Learn more at surroundchicago.com. That's surroundchicago.com. Connecting you with new customers. Get the best sleep of your life. Helix makes personalized mattresses to fit your unique body type and sleep preferences. Go to helixsleep.com and get up to $200 off during their holiday sale. 736 in our Team Hochberg Traffic Center, and now the latest with Jim Talamonte. In downtown Chicago, Upper Wacker is open again between State and Michigan after police were dealing with a man hanging off the side of Trump Tower since yesterday evening. South Loop closures are in place on Michigan Avenue between Roosevelt and Cermak for rail viaduct work north of 16th. Checking the northbound Tri-State Tollway, there are delays between the Reagan Tollway and the Grand Avenue Curve. Veterans Memorial northbound at Fountain Road. Watch out for some debris in the right center lane. The inbound Kennedy is 23 minutes O'Hare to downtown. Eisenhower, 31 minutes from 390. Stevenson, 32 minutes, 355 to Lakeshore Drive. The ride from 95th to downtown, 20 minutes. That's traffic. I'm Chip Talamonte. On AM 560, The Answer. Chicago's Morning Answer continues next in our AM 560 Weather Center. Cloudy, chilly. Maybe an afternoon brief shower. High 48. Cloudy and 39 overnight. 39 at O'Hare. 41 lakefront. Your next news update is at 8. And Chicago's Morning Answer with Dan and Amy continues next on AM 560, The Answer. Listen to AM560, The Answer, online at 560theanswer.com on the AM560 mobile app and your Alexa-powered smart speaker on TuneIn, iHeart, and Radio.com. See Candace Owens, Charlie Kirk, and Larry Elder at Freedom Summit 2020 on October 31st. Tickets on sale now at freedomsummitchicago.com. Top of the morning, Dan and Amy. Do you ever uh, marvel at how politicians tell you how much they're doing to improve your life at the same time as what they're actually doing is undermining its quality? I care so much about you, I'm going to treat your interests in a cavalier fashion subservient to my interests. Is that not a story of the COVID-19 era? (laughs) Wall Street Journal... In the seven months after the coronavirus shutdown tore through Cincinnati, Crayona McBerry lost half her income, then got it back, got sick, then recovered, risked eviction, then made her rent. Though she is still on her feet, it isn't relief she feels so much as anxiety. The 44-year-old single mom is working seven days a week as a cleaner, behind on some of her bills, and never alert to what the virus might deal next. Well, first of all, the reporting on this, too. What the virus might deal next. Yes, in part, it's the virus because she was infected, and so somebody gets ill and then recovers. That that And that happens in life. Um, but the virus isn't dealing so much of this. We are dealing it. Government is dealing it on Americans like Crayona McBerry. Uh, the Wall Street Journal's reporting continues. It hardly feels like the recession might be over soon. To Miss McBerry or to a Cincinnati entrepreneur whose coffee shop is still missing many of its customers, to a young woman who lost her dream job at GE, or to a comedian who went seven months without a paying gig. The city of Cincinnati stories also reveal adaptation and resilience. Miss McBerry has improvised, has improvised on childcare. The GE worker found a new job. The entrepreneur is keeping his business going. And the comedian is, comedian is writing jokes for the pandemic era. And that's all well and good and speaks to the ingenuity of the the human being. However, it doesn't justify the demands that were put on these human beings by their duly elected leaders, I would argue. And uh, as if that weren't enough, regulating, eliminating 
one's professional pursuits, businesses that people have built over years, generations maybe. Uh, now, and, and also your sort of personal habits in public, now where are we? Regulating your family gatherings come the holidays. Oh, boy. Uh, Illinois Governor Jelly Belly Pritzker on with Jake Tapper on State of the Union on CNN over the weekend. Our public health professionals have recommended that people find ways to gather virtually, continue to gather virtually. We're heading into multiple holidays, uh, and we know that people want to get together, and we know that there's some fatigue out there. But the reality is that this virus hasn't gone away. Uh, we do need to continue to keep ourselves safe from. And the experts he's listening to, Dr. Emily Landon, remember her, get the wiggles out, and Dr. Azike, who's a pediatrician. And he's not, he is not open to, to listen to any other scientists or, list, or read any other data or research. What did Tony Fauci say on Thanksgiving? Because that's such a sacred part of American tradition, the family gathering around Thanksgiving. But that is a risk. You may have to bite the bullet and sacrifice that social gathering unless you're pretty certain that the people that you're dealing with are not infected. People, I'm de- you mean my family? For more on this, we're pleased to be joined by uh, James Bovard, author of 10 books, member of the USA Today Board of Contributors, frequent contributor to The Hill, and contributing editor for American cons- for the American Conservative. Jim, thanks for joining us. Appreciate it. Hey, thanks for having me on. Appreciate that. So, uh, you know, r- there is risk associated with Thanksgiving dinner, with uh, Christmas dinner, with celebrating uh, uh, Rosh Hashanah, uh, with... Uh, Life. With life in general, and until we can completely eliminate uh, the risk, we should just stand in place. Uh, you know, there was a great saying by Thoreau. He said, a man sits as many risks as he runs. Mm. And it seems as if the politicians and a lot of these health bureaucrats seem to think that they need to have absolute power to dictate uh, which risk people can take, but they have ignored the horrendous collateral damage from these uh, shutdowns, from these lockdowns, from placing tens of millions of Americans under house arrest. It's been an absolute legal and constitutional travesty. And these folks are, uh, some of these politicians act like they're hooked on the cocaine of more power and they want to keep doing it. Well, and talk about the governor of Maryland. He uh, threatened a $5,000 fine if you left your home. Yep, a $5,000 fine. And, uh, you know, it was, uh, that was in the storybook time early in the pandemic. He was telling the saying every Marylander can be a hero just by staying home. And, you know, that's really uh, lowering the bar and being a hero. Uh, but but it was all it was so many different levels of BS from there because you had county officials that t- took it even further. You had county officials in the county where I live that sought to uh, shut down all the Catholic schools this fall if there was more than uh, eight new cases uh, here in a county of a million people. So wh- what, the, what, what the health czars were saying was that they should have pretext to shut down everything uh, simply to keep us safe, but there's horrendous domino effect damage from these shutdowns. It, it seem, seems to me this is all of a kind of, um, uh, of our political culture. This is all, so in other words, um, the identitarian politics and COVID politics, and it has become completely political, are very similar. And for the two reasons, and and adopted by so many, and for the two reasons that Andrew Sullivan writes about over at his blog about, you know, why wokeness is winning in spite of its uh, lunacy, uh, one reason is it's emotional. Uh, You know, there's some some, kernel of a basis to be... Uh, indignant about the maltreatment of George Floyd. And so that provides the basis to go sort of completely over the edge to Marxism uh, and to those who are used preying on people's emotion to promote a lot, a bigger, badder agenda. And the other reason, and this is an important one that's under discussed, it's just super easy. And you just mentioned it. All I have to do to be considered a hero all I have to do to call myself a good person and to have others affirm that I'm a good person is throw a mask on. Just like all I have to do 
is be morally indignant about George Floyd and all of a sudden I'm a civil rights leader. You know, heroism comes very cheap these days. Yeah, and it's, uh, there are a lot of folks who live for their virtue signaling. Um, I was doing a hike a couple of days ago on the, uh, on the towpath, Sino C- Canal towpath, and I was talking with a couple of guys I know. We, we were walking along we're wearing masks, and this old guy comes along the opposite direction. You know, he's, he's wearing a mask, and he's got a big stick, and he suddenly stops and points his stick at and says, distancing. And I said, what? Social distancing. And I'm thinking, so what are you, some Old Testament prophet out here <laughs> waiting to cast us into hell? I mean, it was like, dude, you know, chill out. But he was so indignant. And, you know, I saw him out there week after week walking along and shouting at people. I mean, they're outside in the sunlight and the fresh air, for God's sake. I mean, but there is this there is this righteousness. And it's like, they're, you know, it's, you know, it's sort of like the, um, the, the, the old time prohibitionists. Uh, you know, taking their axes and going and busting up bars. And it's like, oh, somebody's outside not wearing a mask. It's like, dude, get a life. I mean, tell to your therapist. Well, and the other part of this, too, is that it is status conferring. In other words, you see the uh, elites from all the different sectors saying the same things. And so, you know, by repeating what they're saying, I'm in their league. I am one of the vanguard. I'm a member of the vanguard class in American society. Yeah, and and it's a uh, there's a huge class element there because it's the vanguard that gets to you know work at home and uh, you know semi goof off, uh, whereas the the uh, working class folks in the service industry are out there busting tail to get to work and dealing with a heck of a lot more risk. But um, I mean, it certainly worked out well for the sale of antidepressants this year. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's true. And why? I mean, politicians have no liability for the eco- economic damage they inflict. And I know that some people wanted to sue Mayor Lightfoot because their property, uh, the value of their home went down because of these draconian lockdowns. Wow, that's interesting. Well, I, I mean, I think there, there are entire states that are being like that. Governor Whitmer in Michigan I'm amazed at how at, at how much power she grabbed, and I'm appalled to see how the media is spinning the Michigan Supreme Court decision that busted her chops. It said, "Well, it's just you know, it's a bunch of Republicans." It's like, no, it's the law, it's the Constitution. I mean, um, how did she become a dictator so easily? Mm. How did she become a dictator so easily? Boy, isn't that's that a, a question that's been asked <laughs> through the annals of history, Jim? How did this happen? How are we here? I mean, you know, not to, to uh, suggest that we're on the same inexorable path, but I mean, it was uh, about four years before people were uh, running through the streets of Caracas trying to catch dogs for food that you had uh, left wing pundits on in, in the favored outlets talking about the Venezuelan economic miracle. And then it all came apart. Uh, they didn't uh, see the Soviet Union fall coming because they don't look at the infirmities of the foundation on which their utopian societies are built. Yeah, and there are, you know, there are basic incentives that drive life. And if the government completely corrupts or uh, blights those incentives, people are going to stop producing it. And if enough people stop producing, there's going to be the entire system will implode. And uh, parts of the U.S. economy, I think, have done that to a degree. Uh, I mean, uh, Biden has said that he might impose a national lockdown mm-hmm. if he gets elected and the uh, COVID rates go up. But, I mean, that's not going to solve anything. I mean, you know, viruses are going to keep spreading. I mean, it's, you know, the, uh, I'm, you know it's been uh, amazing to me to see how the Democrats and Biden have been able to campaign basically on a promise of freedom from fear. If you vote for us, then we will make you safe. And it's, it's complete poppycock, uh, but they've been getting away with it with a lot of the media help, and there's just so little pushback on so many of the uh, basic um, false promises that they're making. But they're the most fearful of all. I mean, Joe Biden doing campaign stops while five or ten people sit in their cars is, looks so pathetic and weak. I what's what, what's going to happen if he becomes president? We're not going to have any state dinners. We're not going to have any world leaders over because... He'll be in fear of getting the, a virus. Well, I assume if he wins it, the government will shut down at nine thirty each morning. There you go. Well, hey, actually, you know, it's sort of one of those things. Uh, when the government is shut down, uh, the man's liberties uh, uh, 
increase. So, I mean, you know, the government being shut down isn't the most terrible idea I've heard, actually. Uh, James Bovard, author of 10 books, member of the USA Today, Board of Contributors, frequent contributor to The Hill, contributing editor of the American Conservative as well. Jim, thanks for joining us again. Appreciate it. Hey, thanks so much. Thank you. And he joined us on our turnkey.pro answer line. It's news, opinion, insight. This is Chicago's Morning Answer on AM560, The Answer. We're all aware of national dealers that sell gold and silver, but national dealers? It sounds so impersonal and far away. Guess what? Fox Valley Coins in Naperville is a national dealer, and they're right here in our backyard. With Fox Valley Coins close by, you won't have to relinquish your personal information and money through the mail and hope that you receive what you ordered in the next days, weeks, or months. Most of the time at Fox Valley Coins, you just walk in the store, pick out what you want, pay for it, and walk out the door. It can be that easy. And if you're interested in selling your rare collector coins or currency, Fox Valley Coins specialize in the rare ones. Buying and selling individual coins and currency, as well as all gold, silver, platinum, palladium, and rhodium in coin, bar, and scrap form. They'll even make house calls when appropriate. Fox Valley Coins is one light north of I-88 on Route 59 in Neighborville. They're closed on Sundays and have been dealing with integrity since 1981. Check out foxvalleycoins.com. That's foxvalleycoins.com. Had the pleasure of seeing Balance of Nature headquarters in St. George, Utah. Wonderful family-owned family owned business. And Dr. Howard cares deeply about his employees, but he cares just as much about his customers. And he wants everyone to live a healthier life. And by doing that, you need to get a 